Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. One of the best ways to prepare individual contributors or high potentials to become future leaders is really to understand really some core fundamentals of the transition. One, there's going to be a transition from peers to the boss-subordinate relationship. That is probably at the forefront of every new manager's mind. How do I maintain those relationships? How do I maintain those friendships when I'm now a manager? First and foremost, the relationships are going to change. Perspectives are going to change. The way we interact will change. So with that being said, we have to prepare new managers to understand one fundamental thing. Not everyone's going to be happy that we got promoted. Not everybody's going to be unhappy we got promoted. And everything in between. Becoming a leader, becoming a first-time manager is a privilege. It's an opportunity. And we have to stay the course and realize one thing, we have a job to do. And that's going to come with the change of those relationships. So what can a new manager do? Number one is reestablish the relationships. How do you go about doing that? Sit down with peers, former peers, and say, look, our relationship is going to change. My perspective is going to change. My responsibilities are going to change. Our communication is going to change. And here comes the big step and suggestion. Look at that person and say, what can we do together to make this transition successful and comfortable for both of us? That's a very we-driven conversation. Most people don't do that. And then when the new manager makes a decision and somebody disagrees, it goes into this emotional interpretation mode. That's step number one. Step number two, understanding the value of providing feedback. The suggestion, a strong suggestion for new managers is to understand the value of strength-based feedback. The Gallup organization reports, when we lead with strengths, people engage eight times more. Yet as a new manager, what do we want to do? We want to fix things and correct things and make things better. And we have to make sure we don't do that at the expense of the people that are working with us. Number two, the other way you can leverage strength-based feedback is to use a three-to-one ratio. By looking at somebody and saying, Joe, here are the three things I love about working with you. And, not but, and I think about improving your ability to manage your time more effectively Hearing that, what goes through your mind and what could we do together to raise that level? And the last thing I want to do is make assumptions of what you're doing or not doing. I'd love to hear what you're doing as it relates to managing your time. That's something called a dovetail. You use three strengths and then you use the word and, and you address the area of opportunity, which leads us to our third suggestion, the language of leadership. Five words you should adopt. We share opportunity, perspective, and observation. The word to get rid of is but. The word to adopt is and. Let me demonstrate again. Joe, I think we have an awesome opportunity to 
raise your ability to manage your time more effectively. And I'd love to have you share with me some perspectives because the last thing I want to do is assume where you're coming from, which I think would be unfair to you. What I just demonstrated was the use of that language in a technique called the sword. So I don't make assumptions, which I think would be unfair to you. I'm throwing myself on the sword. I'm owning why we're having this conversation. It's less accusatory, and it opens the door for a very fruitful and positive conversation. Last, the major suggestion for new leaders. Now, this is an assumptive lesson. And I hear it from new leaders all the time. I've got to get buy-in. I've got to get everybody to buy in. And they're really alluding to their leadership and what they're trying to do. I'll let you in on a secret. Not going to happen. If you're going for 100% buy-in, you're going to be sorely disappointed. I would encourage you to adopt a 50-50 rule. If 50% of your people are really liking you and 50% feel challenged by you, you're doing pretty well. The Gallup organization reports about one third of people are only engaged. About 60 to 66% are neutrally, passively, or actively disengaged, meaning they're negative or disruptive and interruptive. So we have our battles as leaders. Certainly as a first time manager, you have a job to do. Understanding how to give feedback, understanding the value of strengths. Remember, if you invest in the good things, it'll open up the doors. And if you address the areas that are constructive with the word opportunity, the reception will be significantly better. Good luck. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called Coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign 7 to 21-day programs for employees to learn and, more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.